This robin-sized shorebird has one of the longest migrations in the animal kingdom. With wingspans of 20 inches, some Rufa red knots will fly more than 93,000 miles every spring from the southern tip of South America, up the east coast of the United States, and into the Canadian Arctic to breed, only to repeat the trip in reverse during the fall migration. Many of these migrating birds stop at the Delaware Bay on their trip north, nearly doubling their weight by fitting on horseshoe crab eggs before embarking on the last leg of their journey into the Arctic. Delaware Bay is unique um, in it provides a food resource that's available to the shorebirds nowhere else in the world. It provides a food resource that they can put on weight at what would be the equivalent for a human being of, say, eight pounds a day. While populations have been relatively stable for the past 10 years, knot numbers have remained low and vulnerable to the effects of climate change, along with many other bird species. At the two best studied uh, red knot concentration areas here in the Delaware Bay during the spring, and then down at the southern tip of South America on Sierra del Fuego during the winter, both of those uh, really important red knot areas saw roughly 75% declines um, from the baseline levels that were recorded in the 1980s. We have thoroughly reviewed the best available science on the Rufa red knot and have determined that the shorebird meets the definition of threatened under the Endangered Species Act. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service is proposing to protect the knot as threatened across all its range, which includes 40 states, 24 other countries, and their administrative territories or regions. The areas used by the knot in the U.S. continue to be lost to sea level rise, shoreline stabilization, and development. We know there's a lot of uncertainty about what's happening in, in the Arctic. However, we also know the Arctic is the area that's going to feel the effects of climate change, for instance, soonest, and we see some indications of that possibly happening. Climate change is affecting food resources, the timing of the bird's annual cycle, and breeding habitat and predation in the Arctic. Other threats are moderate in comparison, but could become more significant. Scientists agree that a primary factor in the knot's population drop following 2000 was reduced food supplies in the Delaware Bay due to commercial harvest to the horseshoe crab. There was a harvest of, uh, of horseshoe crabs, and in fact an overharvest. And those crabs were used for a variety of, of purposes, including the bait fishery, and also biomedical purposes. In recognition of the um, declining stocks of horseshoe crabs and the importance of the crabs to the birds, the Atlantic States Marine Fisheries Commission has prepared a horseshoe crab fisheries management plan uh, in 1998. And that plan has been revised several times. Most recently, in 2012, it was revised to incorporate scientific modeling so that now the harvest levels of the crabs are actually tied scientifically to the population targets of the red knot. While the horseshoe crab population has not yet fully rebounded, the framework should ensure no further threat to the knot from the crab harvest. Local and regional conservation measures occur throughout the knot's range, and we are working with many partners to understand the knot's needs and the necessary steps to protect it into the future. The added protection of the Endangered Species Act would strengthen and coordinate these efforts. This would not only implement federal protection and prohibit certain practices that affect knots, but it would also acknowledge the knot's conservation needs, threats and status, and the necessity of working together for this species. One of the big gaps in our knowledge is where the first year birds winter, and uh, so we have partnered with Monomoy National Wildlife Refuge up on Cape Cod and uh, conserved New Jersey's wildlife to put geolocators on juvenile birds that stop at Cape Cod in the fall. Two years later, when they come through Delaware Bay to go up to their breeding grounds, if we can capture some of them, we can locate where their wintering habitat is. That will allow us to assess how well their wintering habitat is serving them and may give us a clue about what is or is not happening in terms of the population due to that. You can learn what role your backyard plays in the knot's life cycle and contact local conservation groups for information on how you can help. A very large percentage of red knots are marked with individual uh, flags on their legs uh, with different countries based on the color in which they were marked. New Jersey Audubon has established a website called bandedbirds.org so anywhere, any person anywhere in the world with access to the internet can report a, a flagged bird and help us understand what's going on and where they're mo moving to and what they're doing. Be a citizen scientist and report not in other shorebird sightings at bandedbirds.org and ebirds.org. Visit www.fws.gov slash northeast slash rednot to learn more. And join in the informal conversations on our Facebook, blog, and Twitter.